and welcome. In this video, we are going to examine how latitude affects climate around the world. Let's just remind ourselves about the definition of climate before we continue. In terms of definition, weather and climate are somewhat similar and easy to confuse. However, whereas weather refer to the general atmospheric conditions over a few hours or days, climate refers to general atmospheric conditions over a very long period of time. 30 years or more. Climate is calculated by using the average weather conditions over this 30 year period. I should also say that there are five factors that influence climate around the world at any given point. These five factors are latitude, also known as distance from the equator, distance from the sea or ocean, also known as continentality, ocean currents, Altitude, also known as height above sea level, and relief, also known as mountains or shape of the land. No single factor is responsible for the climate of a place, but in order to help you understand the five factors, it is easier to examine them one at a time in isolation. In the video, we are going to discuss the basics of how the first factor I mentioned, latitude, affects climate. Latitude refers to how far or close to the equator a place is. This affects climate as the closer you get to the equator, the hotter the climate is likely to be. And the further you move away from the equator, the colder the climate is likely to be. The reason for this is caused mainly by how incoming solar radiation, also known as insulation, from the sun interacts with the surface of the earth. This diagram shows how insulation from the sun approaches the earth in parallel beams. At the equator, these sun rays strike the surface of the earth at right angles, meaning the sunlight is focused or concentrated on a very small area. This direct sunlight goes as far as the Tropic of Capricorn at 23.5 degrees south and the Tropic of Cancer at 23.5 degrees north. The region between these two tropic tropics is called the tropics or the equatorial region. You can see how when the earth spins on its axis the sunlight strikes directly all along the equator and the tropical regions. I have purposefully made a mistake in this diagram. Can you spot it? The reason I made the mistake is to show you how the sun's rays would heat the earth if the axis were not tilted as it is easier to understand how latitude affects climate without the tilt of the Earth, and then to add the tilt once you understand the core concept. As you know, the Earth's axis is actually tilted at 23.5 degrees, like this. Now if we add the sun's rays to the diagram, you can see where the Tropic of Capricorn and Cancer come from. The lines exist because they represent the furthest south and north the direct rays of the sun strike throughout the year. These two diagrams represent the position of the earth according to the seasons of the southern hemisphere. The southern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun during its summer season, causing the insulation to strike directly between the equator and the Tropic of Capricorn. During winter for the southern hemisphere, the southern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun and insulation strikes most directly between the equator and the Tropic of Cancer in the northern hemisphere. If the equatorial regions are the hottest, it makes sense that the coldest places in the world are as far away from the equator as possible, the north and south poles. The reason for this once again is the way insulation from the sun strikes the earth. And it is also here where we see the round shape of the Earth come into play. If the Earth were flat, all places would receive equal amounts of direct sunlight. But we know that this is not the case. The diagram below shows how the shape of the Earth causes the same parallel lines that strike the Earth directly at the equator are spread over a greater distance at the poles. If you have the same amount of heat at the poles, but a much larger area to heat, it makes logical sense that the land at the poles will simply just not heat as much. Now, let's add the tilt of the Earth's axis into the diagrams. 
If we examine the model of the globe as they rotate on their tilted axes, we can also see something quite extraordinary. In summer for the southern hemisphere, when the southern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun, the north pole receives no sunlight at all. In winter for the southern hemisphere, when the southern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun, the southern pole receives no sunlight at all. The north and south pole experience only two seasons, summer and winter. During each pole's summer, the pole receives months of uninterrupted sunlight. But if it receives months of sunshine, shouldn't that mean that the pole gets really, really hot? Well, don't forget that the sunlight is spread over such a large area that it never really gets above zero degrees Celsius. During winter in each pole, the months of uninterrupted darkness cause the temperatures to plummet well below 40 degrees Celsius for the entire season. Just so we're 100% sure that the polar regions do in fact receive the same amount of sunlight as the tropical regions, let's check using this diagram. You will notice that all the sun's rays are the same distances apart, but when you compare the amount of land they need to heat, the rays at the poles are spread way further and are way less focused and direct than the rays at the equator. Based on our knowledge of how precipitation works in relation to weather, we can also make the educated assumption that because places in the tropics tend to be the hottest throughout the year, they would also receive the most amount of rainfall. We can also guess, therefore, that the coldest regions in the world, the poles, receive the least precipitation. Both of these guesses are generally correct. Equatorial regions, in fact, receive over 2,000 millimeters of rainfall a year. Some places in the tropics receive over 10,000 millimeters in a year. Polar regions, by contrast, receive an average of about 25 millimeters of rainfall a year. Polar regions are actually known as frozen deserts because of this. If you consider the global average in rainfall is 1,000 millimeters, you can see how the equatorial or tropical regions and the polar regions fall way outside the average. Before we end this video, we should quickly summarize what we have learned. Firstly, climate is different from weather, as weather refers to the general atmospheric conditions over a very long period of time, whether, whereas weather is based on a few hours. Secondly, latitude is a factor that affects the temperatures and rainfall of different regions around the world based on how far from the equator that region is. And finally, we learned that the reason latitude makes equatorial regions hot and polar regions cold and dry is because of how much direct sunlight the place receives, not how many hours of sunlight. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you found the information entertaining and educational.